I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Just when you thought Marvel couldn't get any bigger this year than Civil War, along comes Benedict Cumberbatch as the Sorcerer Supreme, Doctor Strange. And with its trippy visuals and journeys to fantastical worlds, this flick has been hyped up to be the game changer for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And that is certainly more than you can say for the original film incarnation of Doctor Strange, back when he was just the star of a 1978 TV movie that aired on CBS, which was also airing The Incredible Hulk and Amazing Spider-Man TV shows that year as well, and made this movie as a way of opening the back door for another Marvel TV show starring the good Doctor. But the flick got its ass whooped in the ratings that night by a rerun of Roots, and the hopes for a Doctor Strange TV series were dashed immediately. But hey, if that Captain America TV movie could give me some joy, I see no reason why Doctor Strange couldn't do the same. After all, it is the one Marvel TV project that had the most input from Stan Lee himself as a creative consultant. And we know Stan Lee putting his name on a TV show or TV movie is always a mark of quality. Stripperella, who wants to be a superhero, that Arnold Schwarzenegger cartoon that never got made, a time jumper. Okay, now I'm starting to think that you guys are making these shows up. I I've never even heard of these shows. No, seriously, quit lying to me, guys. So we open in another dimension, where a demon known only as the Nameless One, who I think is the baby from a racer head all grown up, was banished 500 years ago by the Sorcerer Supreme, Linmer, played by Oscar-winning actor John Mills. Linmer has grown old and weary, and is planning to pass on his powers to psychiatric doctor, and not neurosurgeon, Stephen Strange, played by Peter Hooten. Who? Oh, you know, he played Tony in the original Inglorious Bastards. Uh, and he was also part of that anti-littering ad campaign from the 70s. Give a hoot. No pollute. So the Nameless One is planning on escaping this dimension by defeating Linmer as he passes on his powers, with assistance from famed sorceress Morgan Le Fay, played by Jessica Walter, whom we know nowadays as the boozy mother of Michael Bluth and Sterling Archer. But if Morgan fails to defeat the sorcerer, the Nameless One will take away Morgan's precious youth. If I wanted something your thumb touched, I'd eat the inside of your ear. So Morgan first tries killing off Linmer by possessing the mind of a girl named Clea and pushing Linmer off a bridge. I've fallen and I can't get up. But Linmer ends up surviving and Clea's brain is so messed up from having Lucille Bluth all up in it that she ends up in the psychiatric ward run by Doctor Strange. The woman, I dreamed about her. And you're afraid if you go to sleep again. I'll die. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I think you want to go to the Freddy Krueger ward next door. You can't miss it. But Clea does end up falling into a coma, and Linmer comes to tell Doctor Strange that the only way to save her is to follow in the footsteps of the Doctor's dead father and replace Linmer as the next Sorcerer Supreme, who has the ability to travel across different realms and universes in order to put Clea's lost soul back into her body. When does it begin? Now. <laughs> I'm sorry, am I watching Overdrawn at the Memory Bank all of a sudden? I am so goddamn lost. I'm in the And even though these special effects may make the movie look interesting, even though you can see these same type of effects just by smoking weed and staring at a blacklight poster while listening to Pink Floyd, I can assure you a great deal of this movie is pretty damn dull. It's not so much a superhero movie as it is a subpar episode of Saint Elsewhere, only if Howie Mandel shot lightning from his hands now and then. And it doesn't help that Peter Hooten is a whole lot of bland in the Doctor Strange part. He gives the bare minimum of enthusiasm or charisma an actor needs to sell this stupid movie. And his character spends most of the movie pissing and moaning about how he doesn't want to become a sorcerer. If you want to understand your destiny, would you still choose understanding over ignorance? Yes. 12 seconds later. I don't think I'm ready for this. I mean, the guy doesn't even sport the classic Doctor Strange costume until an hour and 14 minutes into the damn movie. Look at yourself. Yeah, look at yourself, asshole. You look like Ron Burgundy decided to take up LARPing. 
Boy, that escalated quickly. And I don't even think Linmer's Asian manservant here is confident this asshole will make a good sorcerer. You're like a child with a loaded gun. You can harm yourself or others. Oh, sure. That's a good superhero tagline. Doctor Strange, he's like a child with a loaded gun. But for all the dull bullshit you have to put up with, there's still plenty of awfully goodness to be found in this flick. I mean, you can't help but laugh at all the utter 1970s of it all. The stupid outfits and glorious porn stash on Doctor Strange the use of slow motion that makes some scenes look like shampoo commercials, the beyond cheap lightning effects and demon costumes, and the gloriously god-awful musical score that sounds like it was done by John Carpenter's Pet Cat Willie. <laughs> Get me wrong, there's a lot to laugh at here, and a lot of fun to be had with it, but you have to wade through some 70s TV movie sludge to get there. So watch this flick at your own risk. And seeing as this makes two actors with ridiculous last names who have played the role of Doctor Strange, I can only wonder what last name the next actor is going to have. I'm David Pumpkins, man! Free your mouth and the booze will follow. That's the key to mastering your inebriation as you enter the realm of the awfully good drinking game. Take a shot or drink every time you spot the ancient symbol of light. Ah yes, this must be the A that was once foretold long ago by the master wizard Fonzarelli. Hey. Linmer uses his Jedi powers, oh, I mean magic powers, to wipe someone's mind. This is uh, an unusual situation. This is uh, an unusual situation. Visiting hours are from three till six. May I come in? Come in. And you'll drop your weapon. And I'll drop my weapon. They recite the spell for casting off demons. I want you to say exactly these words. In the name of Ryle, scourge of demons, I command you, be gone. In the name of Ryle. Plato, Mirada. <laughs> you see someone unleash another glowing laser effect. Hadouken! And take a double shot for the two times Morgan uses her amazing power of disappearance. <laughs> You know, I'm starting to think that this is a better adaptation of Bewitched than it is of Doctor Strange. Well, it's better than the Nicole Kidman movie, I suppose. And on the nudie watch, even in this television movie, you'll get plenty of cleavage to ogle on from Jessica Walter. That is, if you aren't scared off by her evil stare, like this kid is. Ugh, I don't know what's scarier. Jessica Walter's evil eyes or that kid's wacky face. I mean, that face is scarier than the demonic monster we got in this movie. That much is for damn sure. On the enjoyableness continuum scale from Boulder Bruce, Doctor Strange is stuck between the realms of the magically cheesy and the unbearably crappy and conjures up a five out of 10. Or as it's also known, how I learned to stop worrying and love Jessica Walter's cleavage. I'm Jesse Schaefer, Jublo.com, and I still wonder what the future could have held if Marvel's TV shows had lasted a little bit longer. Thursday on CBS, it's Doctor Strange, Captain America, The Incredible Hulk, and Spider-Man finally united to save the world together as the Avengers! <laughs> right after an all-new mash, Thursday. Joe Blow, he sure likes to drink a lot, and Joe